Hello friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about different types of bias and there is about seven types of different biases. Um, and whenever you're thinking of a bias and we're talking about a certain experiment that has this bias which is giving us not the exact um, value, it's giving us a skewed value, you should always be thinking about what kind of solution you can offer to combat that bias. So always keep that in mind. Okay, so the first one is going to be selection bias. Okay, selection bias is, you know, whenever you are taking a sample for your experiment. Okay, and um, sometimes it those samples might not be a true representation of what is really out there of, a, of, of the true population so your sample might not be a true representation of the population okay so what kind of solution can you offer for these kind of selection bias um, the solution is you should be taking random samples, random independent samples. Okay, so that's the first one. Followed by measurement bias. Okay, what exactly is measurement bias? It's whenever you're gathering information, you might be gathering the wrong information or you might be gathering um, not in the correct way. So it's the distortion distortion of inform information while gathering it. Okay, so how can you beat measurement bias? You can only me beat measurement bias by having a control group or a placebo group. Okay, so you should have a control group or a placebo group to combat the measurement bias. The next one is going to be expectancy or experimenters expect expectancy bias. Okay, for experimenters expect expectancy bias, uh, you should be thinking about, um, you know, a researcher is expecting a certain result. Okay, is expecting a certain result from the experiment. So that defeats the whole purpose. You, 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 can, you have to be completely open-minded and you cannot expect a certain result to come in that. If you do that, then your um, experiment has no validity. All right, so how can you beat that kind of bias? Uh, you can beat that by having a double-blind de design of your experiment. What I mean by that is, what I mean by that is, you know, neither the neither the experimenter nor the um, nor the participant is going to know what they're getting if they're getting the drug or if they're getting the the placebo. Okay, so that is experimenters expect. Ex expectancy. This is followed by lead time bias. Okay, lead time bias deals with um, early detection of a disease. Okay, if you detect a disease early, but if you de detect disease early, you can probably treat it early and you're probably going to have um, better um, survival uh, from that patient. So, you know, you might think that, okay, just because I, uh, I detected a, a disease early doesn't mean that, you know, the person is living longer. It just means that you have caught the disease early. So that's early detection of the disease. That's also lead time bias. 
And how can you beat this kind of uh, bias? You have to see how far back this arrived. Okay, so they're called back and survival. Okay, you have to see how far they can survive because we detected it early. So detecting the disease and categorizing the severity of the disease is also important so that you can see how long this person can survive with that disease and taking that into consideration. All right. The next one is recall bias. In recall bias, um, so sometimes subjects or participants cannot remember the information accurately. Okay? It's not, I know it, people usually get confused with, you know, a physician can recall a certain patient getting a certain, it's not that. It's the participant can't recall info very well. So how can you beat this kind of bias? The only way you can beat these kind of biases is if you confirm the information with others, okay, other reliable sources. All right. Sometimes a patient's relatives or someone who's taking care of the patient knows and keeps track of these things better than the patient himself or herself. Okay. Uh, the next one is late look bias. Okay. Late look bias is when you detect um, the disease when you detect the disease late. Okay, uh, when the severity is the, the, the disease is very severe. Okay. Um, and then if you discover a, a patient with a severe disease and is about to die, uh, then, you know, the survival time drops. So you cannot take that, you know, short survival time and draw a generalized conclusion. You have to think that you have to categorize the disease in different categories and you have to see how severe the, di uh, the disease has progressed and how far this kind of severity is going to and how long the patient is going to live depending on the severity of the disease. So categorizing the severity in this case is the, is the solution to late look bias. Okay. Of the disease. Okay. And last but not the least is confounding. This is the one that is always coming. This is the one where factors which are not important tends to matter, okay? That tends to um, make the, the result kind of not accurate. So that's uh, confounding factors. And now this is the thing. How could you come up with a solution for possible confounders? I mean, confounders are going to be there. Things that you don't want to interfere with your studies is going to interfere. So the only thing you can do is that if you feel like there is many confounders to your, um, to your experiment, you should have multiple studies. Okay, you should have multiple studies and Designing a good research design is also very important. All right, so that's about it. Um, hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I'll post these notes uh, on my blog, and hopefully some of you might need them. Anyways, bye for now.